Hello everyone, Elise Kevedo here. At MWC this year, during the summit themed Leading Infrastructure to Accelerate Electric Power Intelligence, Huawei launched its Intelligent Distribution Solution, aka IDS. To understand more about this solution, let's talk to Edwin Dieter, Chief Innovation Officer of the Global Energy Business Unit at Huawei's Enterprise Business Group. Good day, Edwin. How are you today? Hello, Amiga. I'm very well. Thank you very much. And thank you again for having me. Absolutely. So again, during Mobile World Congress this year, there was just so much. And on our last video during the event, you already gave me a little insight into IDS. So Edwin, let's tell everyone that missed it. What is Intelligent Distribution Solution? Well, as the word itself already implies, uh, and correctly said so, we've launched uh, a solution which is called the Intelligent Distribution Solution, which is a solution that solves problems like every solution is supposed to do uh, with regards to the, uh, the domain or the part in the value chain of the uh, electricity network that is on the distribution side of the equation. If you think about electricity networks from high voltage to medium and then low voltage and via low voltage and transformation goes to offices and buildings and homes. It is that last part, that last mile, if you like. And the key issues when it comes to how and where digital have the strongest impact in creating value by shortening the time that it takes to solve issues, for example, um, that are very technical to solve and which still needs very manual and uh, and people power and people thinking and a lot of paperwork to take care of. Um, that part of the value chain is addressed with an intelligent distribution solution. Uh, to give you for example, to give you an example, if you think of the electricity network and the changes with regards to energy transition and the things that are going on with regards to smart charging infrastructures advanced meter infrastructures and, and a network of smart meters, um, electric vehicles that are coming into the power grid more and more. All of these changes take place the closest to the last mile of the power grid. And that is also the part that therefore becomes the most vulnerable. That is also the part that is at the current stage of things uh, very difficult to take care of from a manual point of view and from an electrical engineering and from a people point of view. What that means is we do we in the electric power industry do not have enough people to take care of and walk around and drive around and move around all the residential areas uh, in and out of high tech parks, financial districts, uh, homes and businesses and offices and organizations and hospital and other community areas where all of this takes place but it does take place on that part. So the intelligent distribution solution is trying to cover a couple, a couple of things. The first one that it tries to cover is it tries to create via digital principles such as cloud edge and pipe uh, constructions and that sort of thing, which is what Huawei is known for, to create a device that functions very similar as a smartphone. Because we as a company know very well what it takes to think of things as a device. We know smartphones very well, where hardware and software are uncoupled, we got a device that we can put very close to the edge of all these infrastructures that are capable of connecting, of linking and collecting everything that goes on on that side of the power grid. Inside of that device, we can have a little application that can run an algorithm and the algorithm can support by calculating very fast something that is very interesting and very needed in the electric power networks as well, which is the calculation for line loss. In other words, how many voltage is going into a transformer cabinet and how many voltage is going out? And if there is a difference between these two, then where is that difference to be found? Is it leakage? Is it theft? Is it because of heat? Is it because of something is broken? And that in itself then in the third part shortens the time that it takes to not only calculate it, but also to be notified about it and to scale up to the right teams with the right services and the right resources to cover it and to recover from it. Uh, and that creates in itself then in return as well, a more safer, a more secure, 
and a more reliable power grid that is better managed. And that is, in a nutshell, uh, not trying to use too technical or too difficult or complex uh, explanations about what, in our case, an intelligent distribution solution is about or can be about. Thank you so much, Edwin. That is very powerful. And for anyone that wants more in-depth uh, explanations on exactly what IDS is, you will be able to find a link on the description so you can find a lot more information. Now, Edwin, for enterprises, could you summarize then uh, in a nutshell, what are the benefits of IDS for enterprises that are considering this solution? Well, th this is a solution specifically for and within uh, and from the electric power companies and the electric power industry in their provisioning of energy and in their provisioning of electricity to the different uh, customers that they serve and the, and the industries that they are part of and or that they are powering, so to speak. You can imagine that if a certain area gets implemented, a smart charging infrastructure, and because of that, in parallel to uh, a solar farm that is being added to it, where the overcapacity, so the power or the electricity or the kilowatt hours that the solar farm is able to generate, which is not needed for the residential area that it is part of or for the high-tech park that it is part of. So it pushes that energy back into the power grid to which the power grid is not designed. That power grid then goes down or gets an overload on the wrong side of the power cable, so to speak, of the electricity cable. And in return, that makes the power grid go down. So if an electric power company is able to overcome this, and if an electric power company is able to anticipate on this and be more proactive on it, it means that they will not have the situation that their power grid will be overloaded from the wrong side in, uh, but they're able to manage it and control it and balance it in such a way that the power grid doesn't go down and therefore loses uh, and therefore not loses its capability and its connectivity. What it also does, it creates the opportunity for the power grid and for the electric power companies to, to understand better where at the current moment, but also towards the future, electricity already is lost or leaked. And because of what? Because that is a high cost to electric power companies themselves. If there is a high level of leakage or if there is a high level of line loss in this particular case, because energy that has been generated or maybe energy that has been insourced or purchased to generate electricity that gets transmitted in so many voltages to certain areas, and it is a lower voltage that gets to where it needs to be than what you paid for or what you have generated, then you have lost your your, your your electricity, basically. You've lost your power. So if a power company is able to understand that in such a way that they can not only recover from it, but also overcome it and reduce the loss of line or reduce the line loss, then you can imagine that instead of it becoming a cost, it now adds to the profitability again, and it creates a cost optimization and a profit optimization, which creates the opportunity to reinvest further in digitizing of the power grid as you go along this journey of digital transformation already. And it also, in last part, helps the electric power company to understand better and implement better uh, new energy sources new energy forms um, and new forms of energy at other places in the power grid than where it normally starts, which is where the generation sits. There is in the value chain of the power grid, it starts with generation. From generation, it goes via uh, a, a, a transmission and distribution to transformation and then to the homes. Uh, now it gets generated somewhere else, perhaps, and it can also be put into the power grid somewhere else uh, at a better point, better controllable, better manageable. And that in return then gives a, a much higher level of reliability towards the customers of the electric power company that today perhaps pay a high price for electricity because there is a high level of line loss. If the line loss gets lowered, cost optimization kicks in, profit optimization kicks in, prices can go down further, which is a benefit for the people who need to pay for it or, to, or who use it. Those are very powerful benefits, and this is all thanks to the advancements of technology, which brings me to my last question to you today, Edwin. 
From a technological point of view, what do solutions such as IDS and the advancements of technology then mean for energy transition moving forward? Well, in previous conversation, not only with you, but also in other interviews and in other sessions and also publications and blog posts and so on and so forth, I've been advocating the idea that the conventional power grid is able to transition not into a smart grid, but via smart grid and by adding intelligent connectivity and AI and 5G and that sort of things and cloud enablement is able to transform and transition itself into what's beyond and what's behind and what is after passing through, let's say the stage of smart grid, which is in potential uh, what I refer to as the energy verse or a worldwide web of energy. If that is true, or if that is something to aspire or if that is something that we already can aspire and are able to achieve then you can imagine the management of that is very similar to the management of the world wide web of computing and the world wide web of communication which is software defined so the idea of a software defined power grid that determines what physically needs to be done in order to optimize it to be carbon neutral to be net zero to have the lowest point when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions and, that's, and, and that sort of thing, uh, or the impact of or the sourcing of energy sources and renewable and new energy sources, and what the impact of it would be at any given point in time, at any level of where to put those sources into or onto or via the power grid, becomes more apparent and becomes more visible and becomes better manageable and therefore better operable if you like so it, it becomes better and easier to operate a power grid if it is digital first so if the next wave of innovation is the aspiration of moving via smart grid by adding intelligent connectivity into a energy verse or a worldwide web of energy then there will be an opportunity for software defined power grids and as such it will have a very positive impact on the physical aspects of that power grid, if we need to expand it, where do we grow? What is the impact on the society or on uh, nature and so on and so forth? And, and that is where technology is able to take us. Absolutely, Edwin. Thank you so much for talking to us about IDS. Now, everyone, this is a topic that it is extremely important this year. So, Edwin, I do look forward to having more conversations to see during 2024 and 2025 how the energy sector benefits from these advancements of technology. And let's remember, exploring innovation, meeting industry giants, unlocking opportunities, and creating new partnerships is what this tech world is all about. I'm Elise Quevedo. See you next time. Thank you, Edwin.